Antoine, it's still not too late. Gentlemen, are you ready? And guard. Allez -y. dangerous to interfere now. A distraction could be fatal. <laughs> it is obvious it's the young Marquis you're in love with. Yes, I am. He's no match for the Baron. You will kill him. Oh, I don't think so, Mademoiselle. Do not know the Baron like I do. He is merciless. He's tricked Antoine into this just to kill him. First blood. Well, the little wasp has a sting after all. Perhaps the time has come to remove the stinger. I presume Monsieur le Marquis prefers death with honor to life with dishonor. I'm not an executioner, Monsieur le Marquis. You will have to earn your death. I can't feel his pulse. The Baron is dead, gentlemen. Look at that wound. It's almost black. Uh, I have never seen anything like it. How could a mere scratch from a sword do that? Unless... Careful! If there is a poison on that blade, it must be a very deadly one. What are you doing here, Christo? Mademoiselle was in hopes I might be able to prevent this duel. This is a matter for the Prefect of Police. You will come with me. I'm not a murderer, Colonel Beaumont. The Marquis is a man of honor, Colonel. You will pardon me if I do not share your trust and nobility, Count de Bray. Christo, have your men search him. Search him for what? For the container in which he might be carrying the poison. I refuse to submit to such indignity. Unfortunately, you have no choice. Considering your long friendship with Baron Cleve, Colonel Beaumont, your feelings at this time are quite understandable. But they do not constitute a basis for accusing the Marquis Ferrar of murdering his opponent. What better reason than to try to save his own skin? Who else could have a stronger motive? As long as you're making accusations, Colonel, why don't you accuse me? Are you forgetting that Baron Cleve and I have long been bitter rivals in business? Furthermore, who had better access to the Marquis' sword just prior to the duel than myself? You are only trying to confuse the issue, Debray. Now, will you voluntarily submit to arrest now, or do you prefer to wait until I make formal charges? The Marquis Ferrar prefers to wait. You may inform the Prefect of Police that he may be found at my chateau. I shall also inform the Prefect of the Count of Monte Cristo's interference in this matter, Monsieur. My carriage is at your disposal. If you will be so kind as to take Mademoiselle home. Huh? 
Antoine. Tell me, how did you happen to challenge one of France's most expert swordsmen to a duel? It was an affair of honor. The Baron made an accusation in public that I wished to marry Marie in order to acquire her money. Oh. Was the Baron in love with Marie? That pig. Well, was he? He claimed to be. How did Marie feel about the Baron? She promised to marry me, Monsieur Leconte. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Edmond, an inspector of police is here to arrest the Marquis. They'll never take me alive. No, no. You had enough to do with swords for one day. Let me handle this. Jacopo, take the Marquis to a suitable hiding place. I refuse to go. I have my honor to think of. It is your honor I'm trying to protect. Now go. Carlo, show the inspector in. Count of Monte Cristo, at your service. I am here with a warrant for the arrest of the Marquis Antoine Ferrar. Oh, what a pity. He's not here. I've been given to believe otherwise. Oh, you must have been misinformed, my dear inspector. Very well, monsieur. But if you are, in any way, obstructing justice in this matter... I assure you, my intent is quite the opposite. Oh, Inspector. Uh, tell me, please. What have you learned about the poison on that sword? Our pharmacist will determine all that in time. Of course, you are keeping the swords closely in your possession. I would not let them out of my possession, even for one moment, monsieur. I quite approve. Please, Uncle. You can't let Antoine's life be jeopardized this way. But there's nothing we can do, my dear. I can leave the country with him. What would you do for money? I have more than enough for both of us. In my care as your guardian, yes. You would give it to me, wouldn't you? No, Marie. Oh, but you must. Don't you understand that it's my duty to preserve your fortune? Not to squander it on romantic nonsense. Romantic nonsense? I love him. I know, but there's nothing we can do. Monte Cristo. Well, you're just in time. I have but now finished. Finished? With what? With the document that you yourself will take to the prefect of police, revealing the murderer of Baron Cleve. And who is the murderer? I am. That's ridiculous. Michael is, is assuming the blame only because he thinks I am the murderer. Nonsense, Marie. I poisoned the tip of the Marquis's sword because Baron Cleve was driving me to the brink of financial ruin. There was nothing else I could do. May I ask what kind of poison you used? Uh, I'm not sure. I bought it in a little apothecary shop. I, I don't uh, remember just where. I must say you lie most unconvincingly, Dubray. I do? And surely Mademoiselle Marie is above suspicion. Oh, she had a motive, and a strong one, to save the life of her fiancé. But she couldn't have poisoned the blades. We arrived there when the duel had already begun. 
That is true. I've been such a fool. Dubray, who provided the weapons for that duel? Why, Colonel Beaumont, of course, from his private collection. But surely you don't think... I will be able to tell you more about that when I learn what kind of poison was used. Good day, Count. Mademoiselle. Edmond? Even if this man is one of the greatest experts on poison in all of France, how can he tell us anything on the little we know? Judging by its speed and deadliness, it is not one of the well-known poisons of the world. And only a man like Professor Van Humboldt could... Yes, monsieur. It's Professor Van Humboldt in, please. Who wishes to see him? The Count of Monte Cristo. Won't you come in, please? Thank you. I am Suzanne Roland, the professor's laboratory assistant. Is there anything that I can do to help you? Not unless you are familiar with poisons. Poisons, monsieur? What kind? Deadly. One scratch could kill a man in a matter of seconds. Oh, no, monsieur. I am not familiar with such a poison. And I doubt very much if the professor would be either. I would like to talk with the professor, if I may. Oh, unfortunately, he is not at home at the moment. May we wait? Please, make yourselves comfortable. Thank you. And now, if you will excuse me, I have some duties to attend to. By all means. I must apologize. I have just received a message from the professor. He does not intend to return until late this evening. Oh, that's most regrettable. May I leave my card? Will you please tell the professor that I shall call on him again very soon? Oh, but of course, monsieur. Good day. Good day. I happened to glance out of the window. No messenger came to the house from the professor. No messenger? To the contrary. It was Mademoiselle Suzanne who entered the house before she came in to offer us her apologies. Then I suggest we obtain an explanation, Edmond. Now that can wait for later. Right now I'd like to talk to Antoine. Maybe he knows something about Mademoiselle Suzanne and the professor. Well, Antoine. Monsieur Lecomte, I'm through with this hiding like a frightened rabbit. I prefer to do my fighting out in the open. I think it would be wiser for you to stay here a few days longer. Your continued absence apparently is upsetting some well-laid plans. When the rabbit hides, the dog will eventually give himself away by barking. Tell me, Antoine, how well are you acquainted with Baron von Humboldt? Well, I don't know him at all. Why do you ask? I don't know as yet. But apparently the poison that... It was very kind of you to lead us to this place, Monsieur de Count. And now, by authority given me by the Prefect of Police, I must place you both under arrest. May I ask on what charges? You have been engaged in obstructing justice. Perhaps the Prefect will find other charges when the trial for the murder of Baron Cleve begins. What about my 
servants. Are they also under arrest? Only you, monsieur. We do not consider servants responsible for the actions of their master. Mount up, let us go. Dismount. I don't know what you're doing here, but whatever it is, I shall have your heads for it. You might be more concerned about your own head right now, Inspector. Now, the dueling swords, please. I know nothing of dueling swords, but I think I may know something of your identity. Perhaps. Look in the closet. They're here. Good. In there, please. Please? I warn you, all three of you, it shall be your heads! You hear me? It shall be your heads! Let me out! There are but few poisons in the world capable of causing death so quickly from a little scratch, Monsieur Le Comte. The venom of the King Cobra of India said to kill very rapidly but even a swifter death results from the most minute contamination of the bloodstream with curare. What about curare? It is an extremely rare substance used by savage tribes. Here, I will show you. The needle point of darts they fire from their blow guns are tipped with it whenever they hunt wild animals or, for that matter, each other. The merest scratch means instant death. Professor, I have a reason to believe there is curare on the tip of one, if not both of these swords. Impossible. There is no curare in all of Europe, except the small supply I myself brought back for experimentation. Can you assure me that there is no curare on the tip of these blades? Well, we can soon find out. Oh, I didn't know you had company, Professor. Come in, come in. What is it, my dear? Well, these uh, papers are ready for your signature. Uh, later, later.
It is curare on these swords, Monsieur le Comte. Who besides yourself has access to the poison? No one. I keep it under lock and key. Here, I will show you. It is not here. I am not surprised. Susan, what are you doing here? Monte Cristo knows about the poison. What do you mean? He doesn't suspect that you gave it to me. No. No, how, how could he? And you didn't tell him? Of course not. And how do you know that he didn't follow you here? They're bound to find out that you've gambled your niece's inheritance away. We have to leave the country now, together. No. I have more important matters to take care of. More important than standing trial for murder, Dubray? Ah, oh, Monte Cristo. You undoubtedly made some very clever deductions. Mary told me you were to turn over her estates to her the day she married. But from what I've just heard, you have gambled away her fortune. So you had to make certain that Antoine should not survive the duel, no matter who won. Yes, I have also heard that you are a very clever swordsman, Monte Cristo. Perhaps I am not half so expert. But then I do have the advantage of having Carreri on the tip of my blade. No need to arrest him, gentlemen. Fate has achieved justice in her own strange way. My husband and I will always be grateful to you, monsieur. You know you have my undying thanks also. Our marriage, the preservation of my life and honor. Your happiness together will be my full reward. Godspeed. Oh, Au revoir. And I must also say farewell, my friends. We shall miss you, Carlo. And I you. It's been a privilege to have shared these adventures with you. But my family in Italy needs me. We understand. Perhaps one of these days we shall meet again, eh? And share a cold bottle of wine and a good fight. Perhaps. One of these days. Jacopo. <laughs> 